Um, today we got a very special guest, um, Prince Snoop. You know what I'm saying? It's the best friend, Eric Eric Manor. Um, today, hey, look, part hey, follow us. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, here you go, man. It's another episode with Trash Talk with Rock. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, we can't speak vernacular, but we choose to, um, which is proper English. But we choose to got them speaking, got them this fucking language we call trash. You know what I'm saying? Today. I got a motherfucking special guest, bro. I got my nigga Prince Newt, but goddamn. To me, I used to watch this nigga as a little nigga. He don't even know this shit. I manifested this situation that we have got goddamn going on right now. I manifested this shit because I used to watch him just going to my brother um, Reggie Games. So he used to play with Jack Brick. Um, for those who don't know, he played for Westover. That's in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I used to go to my brother games, and I would just see this like little nigga, bro. I'm talking about bacon niggas, bro. I'm talking about scoring 30 at fucking games. And this nigga was goddamn really like just calling the shots, man. And he was, he ended up was able to have a best friend that ended up going to the league. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're going to talk about that. But you know what I'm saying? I got motherfucking all hell new. And this bitch today, man. Honest, honest. Man, I'm just uh, appreciative of being here, man. You got yeah. a good thing going. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You yeah. talked about doing this. You got it up and running in 48 hours. It takes most <laughs> niggas like 48 days to get their podcast up and running. But, man, like I say, I'm just uh, appreciative of being here, man. Yeah, yeah, situation. yeah, 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 yeah. This baby bro right here. So it's, <laughs> for it's, sure. It's, it's, it's real organic. For sure, me? for sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But look, Nuke, but look, like, look, look we're going to get straight to this bitch. Yeah. Because I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, so look, you from the Ville. You came from the Ville, you yep. know what I'm saying? Who were you in the Ville? Uh, because, um, not to cut you off, yep. but uh, I done heard some solid ass niggas. They seen that got them, you was got them in their world, you yep. know what I'm saying? So I just want to know who who were you in that you think that in your mind that who you were in that in that world? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, not to uh, really big up myself, but. Uh, I mean, in simplest terms, really, I'm just a young nigga that hoop, like they get money and, and, and like the fuck hoes, you feel me? <laughs> nah, for real, that's, I mean, that's really the three things that sum me up. And uh, mm -hmm. besides being a great son and, and a great friend, I mean, definitely, shit, you know what I mean? That's that's about it. Definitely. That, I mean, me up, I mean at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, um, you had a baby brother named Ben. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And he was able to goddamn pick off your legacy. So, like, how, how much how much of that got down? Like what? What did that do for you, knowing that your your little brother was watching, or was you like on some shit? Like you gonna watch this real shit? You know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, yeah. Now I just tried to set the example, and uh, I never really wanted him to follow in my footsteps. You know what I'm saying? I wanted him to be better than me, mm -hmm. whether that was on the court, off the court, in school, in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And actually, like I know my little brother look up to me, and we five six years definitely. apart, but like definitely, he don't know. Like definitely. I look up to him. You know what wow. I'm saying? Wow. Just coming from where he coming from, being a late bloomer. Not really getting to play, you know what I'm saying, in high school like that, getting his just due. And then walking on to a D2 school, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, and then going definitely. to play professional, he going into like his six or seven year professionally. So, definitely. yeah, I just look up to him. Man. And look, my thing is, yo, Bam is one of my best friends. So I can, I'm, I'm, I'm able to one that can say like, yo, that nigga was ass, bro. Yeah, yeah. That nigga was, was fucking day, ass, sure. yo. He was back in that day. So, his progression... Like, how, how does it feel like seeing your baby brother, like, progress into the man that he is to where now? Nigga, I look at him as, like, goddamn, he up there with the goddamn Anthony Hilliers, the yeah, motherfucking, yeah. he can compete with the Emanuels and shit now. Yeah, for you sure. know what I'm saying? Uh, as far as his progression, like, me and Emanuel, we always had my dad or Emanuel dad to, like, push us and, and coach us and, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Take Definitely. us through individual workouts every day. Definitely. My brother, he got that shit out the mud on his own, man. Like, I mean, working out on his own. Because by the time Bam was still playing. My dad was, you know what I'm saying, he was furthering his career, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, in finance and shit. He couldn't really take the time out to really coach him or mold him like he did me and E. Manor, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, my dad had a, a integral part in yeah, 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 growth, yeah, but sure, like, sure. he did that, yeah. most of that shit on his own. You for mean? sure. Yeah, for sure. And look, I mean, look, let's get straight into it, man. Like, like, like who is E. Manor to you? Like, <clears throat> is it is it your best friend? Yeah, is yeah. it, is it, like, who who is Eric Manor? Because, a lot of niggas know Eric, Eric, a lot of niggas know Prince Nuke. Niggas know Nuke that Nuke is like you you are well established in the view. Mm -hmm. But you know Eric Manning went to the league, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So we just gonna get on to who he is before we get into who you are. So 
Yeah, uh, Imana, man. I, I first met Imana. Uh, I think it was it was eighth grade. It was like after basketball season, going into AAU season. Definitely. So my cousin Brian, mm-hmm. uh, he kept saying, "Yo, I got this. I got this nigga named Imana. You know what I'm saying? He out in Hope County. He, he can fuck with you. <laughs> it wasn't too many niggas fucking with me as far as like." Being a point guard and handling the rock, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Especially I was advanced to be in eighth grade, 13, 14 years old. Definitely. So I'm like, yeah, take me to meet this nigga, you know what I'm yeah, saying? So sure. we go out to uh, Aberdeen, like Southern Pines area, I believe. So, you know, it's country as hell out there. So it's like 40 minute ride from the Ville. Yeah. So we get to this gym. And, and mind you, like I'm like five three. I got a I got a big ass afro out here. I think I'm obviously. What I the got, fuck, man? You have the afro though. Man, I just had a big ass afro. I was an Iverson fanatic. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> shit, I thought I was baby AI. Proceed. So proceed. so we get to the gym, and it's a whole bunch of kids. You know, like seven eight graders. You know, they practicing the shit. So I'm looking for E Mana, but you know, I'm looking for a nigga that's like my height, my size. You know what I'm saying? I I'm like, yo, what what E Mana at? Yeah, man? for sure. I'm telling my cousin that he like, there you go, right there. I looked over, I'm, mind you, I'm 5'3", I'm like 100 pounds. This nigga e a size 13 shoe, he's 6'1". He got a big ass head that make him 6'3 already. So I'm like, I'm like, damn, cuz, you ain't tell me he was uh, NBA height, you feel know I me? Mean? So, like, back then? Yeah, yeah, back yeah, then. He was sure. 14 years old, you know what wow. I'm saying? So, uh, we met or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he came to stay, stay the weekend with me, like that next weekend, and we've been best friends ever since. For well, sure. my thing is, all right, so like, like, new to me, like, so like, growing up, just watching you hoop, bro, I always just thought that, like, yo, bro, you was gonna go to the league, mm-hmm. bro. So, my thing is, did you ever think in your mind that you was going to the league? No, I knew I was going to the league, like, yeah. like, for sure, for sure, but. Yeah. Like, I always tell people the difference between me and Emana is, like, growing up in the Ville, like, like niggas like Ant Hilliard, uh, name, name some more, well, I can't say CJ, he made it to the NBA, but niggas like Ant Hilliard, uh, you remember Brennan Evans? Brennan Evans from Westover? Yeah, from Westover. He was like, four. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Niggas like that, we all had the same amount of talent, you know what I'm saying? But, like, to get to that next level, especially... Me being 5'10", like, you got to have that extra work ethic, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. And a nigga like me, I'm like, shit, I just scored 30 points. I had seven three-pointers last night. I'm, I'm not waking up in the morning going to get extra, my baby, extra nope, shots. No, nobody put that battery in your fucking yeah, back. Yeah, so yeah. what was that shit to, for you to be on them people level, though, bro? Uh, it was just, really, it was it was just heart. It was it was all heart. I played with all heart and, and really, like, God-given ability, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I tell any kid, like... Even though you play with heart and God given ability, you still gotta have that like that extra work ethic. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like E Mana, he gonna score thirty, he gonna go run a mile the next morning. I mm-hmm. go score thirty. I'm pr- I'm trying to go t- to a, to a, a shorty house to go to the gambling house the next morning. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I ain't not trying to get no extra shots up. I just had thirty. Like my thing know. is, yo. So look, with you knowing how the fuck good you was, bro, mm-hmm. because you know you could have went to the league. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What what was that shit that had you one foot? In the streets, mm-hmm. one foot in the gym because we all know, like those that know Prince New, mm-hmm. they don't know that, like yo, you was in the streets. Mm-hmm. So what the fuck? Well, what the fuck were you doing in the streets? Uh, well, I, I just want to clarify, like when you say being in the streets, like I don't consider myself a gangster. I don't consider myself a thug. You know what I'm saying? But like yeah. growing up in the Ville, your next door neighbor might be a, a blood or a crip or, mm-hmm. or a thug. So. Mm-hmm. Like you might be guilty mm-hmm. by association, but yeah, definitely. you yeah. know when they go do their game banging shit, yeah. like I, I go to the crib, but we we like to fuck hoes together, we like to chill on the green box together, yeah, we yeah, like yeah, to, yeah. to shoot hoops together, we like yeah. to go to the skating ring. You know what I'm saying? But tell us about that time when, um, well, you know, goddamn, you know, we brothers, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So beside this goddamn podcast shit, bro, you know, goddamn, we talk on the phone every day. Yeah. So you you told me on the phone one time that it was a time where I think some. Bloods and Crips approach you or something like that? Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. This is when... So, uh, for everybody that don't know, I grew up in Germany like the first 10 years of my life. You know what I'm saying? Mannheim. Yeah, Mannheim, Germany. Me and my Man- brother me and my brother from Germany. Shout out Mannheim, nigga. Yeah, yeah, I, for sure. I, I grew up in Mannheim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real, bro. Mm-hmm. Proceed. So, uh, like I said, me and my brother, we grew up in, in Germany. I came to the States when I was 10 years old. So, just that transition from coming from Germany... And going to Columbia, South Carolina, which is basically like equivalent to the Ville. Definitely. I was in seventh grade, like 12, 13 years old. My favorite color is red, you know what I'm saying? So I'm walking through the halls. Mind you, I'm like five feet. 
Yeah. Uh, again, a hundred pounds soaking wet. So I'm walking through the halls. Yeah. Little bitty ass nigga like this big with all red on. So some yeah. blood niggas approach me. They basically bump me like, yeah, little nigga, you gotta stop wearing all that red. And I'm looking at them niggas like, who you talking I'm to? Like, nigga, I don't bang, nigga. I hoop, nigga. I hoop and, and, and get hoes, nigga. What you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? But it was on my ass, but like, it was me by myself. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't want no smoke, but I, I ain't no bitch. I had to take up and stand up for myself. You definitely, know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely, definitely. But, um, to go back to 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 say like one foot in, in in basketball and one foot in the streets, it was just growing up in Fayetteville. I don't want to say a product of environment, but that's just what it was. Like it definitely niggas like the thug, niggas like to go to the to the trap. Even if you wasn't selling drugs, you like to, your niggas is in the trap. You mm-hmm. can go win some money gambling. It's weed smoke mm-hmm. going on. So you know what I'm saying. Nobody want their 15 year old, 16 year old kid in that type of environment but that's just what it was and I, I could take care of myself like, when do you when do you like realize gambling was a problem for you uh because like me i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you finish but uh, yeah me i knew it was a problem for me it was when i gambled my i gambled my last 200 dollars. i gambled that shit and it was my rent money yeah so i had to go to my family members to mm-hmm. let them know like yo I need you to uh, piggyback on me because yo, I just get on my shit. Well, I ain't tell them that. Yeah, yeah. But I just know, like, okay, I gotta step away from this shit because I'm addicted to this shit. Mm-hmm. And Dick Gregory said, me and you talk about Dick Gregory mm-hmm. all the time. And Dick Gregory said, yo, yo, if you got a problem with somebody, don't wish death on them. Yeah, just yeah. wish they got a gambling problem. Mm-hmm. They'll gamble yeah, their yeah, fucking whole real, real. house away. You know what I'm saying? So I'm some real saying. nigga shit. When did you know you had a gambling problem, my dude? Nah, that that shit really started out like. Really, like, I was, like, seven, eight years old, fam. So, like, if you go to a gambling house now, it's somebody walking around calling the shots. You know, they raking 10% of every pot. You know what I'm saying? Like, that used to be my mama back in the day. Like, like, count that up. So, I'm sitting in my mama laps counting money up, facing all the the George Washingtons the same way or the Abraham Lincoln's the same way. So, yeah, it it stemmed from, like, seven, eight years old, man. My grandma said that shit in my blood, bro. But, you know. That, that shit dead, that shit a dub now, but like for for a long time, that shit was just in my blood, bro. Yo, how the fuck did you feel when Eric got uh, motherfucking drafted, bro? Uh, that draft, that draft day, that shit was crazy, bro. It was just like... Can, 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 can you take yourself back to that time when, yeah, when, yeah, when, he, yeah, got yeah. To, when he got drafted? So that year, that year, it was, uh, it was probably like 10 point guards that came out that year. It was like Steph Curry, Johnny Flynn, I think Jeff T, Darren Collison. So all these niggas was going before E. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And uh, it was like the 17th, 18th pick. It's 30 picks. You know, 30 picks is guaranteed, guaranteed money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so definitely. it's like 17th pick go by, 18th pick go by. This at this point, E he down. Like basically like moping, you know what I'm saying? I'm where, like, where 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 was you at when you was watching that shit? We was all we had to get together at E crib, okay, at his brother crib. Continue, yeah, so like a draft party. Continue, continue, continue. So he 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 got his head down, you know what I'm saying? And he, he he talking about it ain't looking good. I'm like, bro, we got ten picks left. There's no other guards that can go, you know what I'm saying? They can take over you. You feel me? So uh, we had got the call right before the twentieth pick. We got the call and uh, they said Jerry Sloan, he gonna they gonna take E man at uh, pick twenty. So they took him at pick 20, and that shit was just like, even though I didn't never get drafted, that shit was like, I got drafted. Man. Nigga, it was a it was a pick, it was a picture where y'all was like crying. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like, what, what, what was the emotions in that bitch? Nah, that feeling, was, I, it, it, it's like, you, you can't, can't even describe that feeling, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's like an out-of-body experience, really, because like, niggas, we look at draft, like, I think when he got drafted, he was 22 years old. So let's say we started really being fans of basketball at like seven, eight years old. So imagine you from eight to 22, we looking at every draft, just vi- envisioning ourselves mm-hmm. up there. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like I said, even though I never got to make it up there on that podium, when Emana did, like I, I, I felt the, the success. But my thing is, like in a way you kind of did because, yo, Newt, you was able to meet James Harden. Yeah, for sure. You was able to meet, um, you know, the best definition of Kevin Durant. Mm-hmm. So, like, exp- explain your, like, your, def- your, uh, your um, relationships with um, them boys. You know what I'm saying? All right, so when he got drafted uh, to Utah, mm-hmm. that, you know, the draft is in June, but the, the season start like, October, November. Mm-hmm. So he got drafted, I think, December, right before Christmas, 2009. Wow. 
uh, it was snowing in Utah. We was just chilling just like this, you know what I'm saying? He came downstairs with like a, a look on his face. I'm like, what's good? He was like, yo, bro, I like I just got traded to Oklahoma. And I'm like, nigga, what? <laughs> Oklahoma with KD and, and Russell and, and, and JH? Like, that's where we about to go? So like Ooh. probably 10 minutes later, after he got the call, like 10 minutes later, like it had Blockbuster Trade like going down on, you know, on the bottom of ESPN. So I was like, God damn. So, the next morning we had to fly, we had to uh, pack everything we had with well, what we could. Yeah. We got on the PJ and uh mm-hmm. shit, we, we got the um we got to Oklahoma, so we were supposed to be in a hotel. Mm-hmm. But James, James Harden, he was just like, nah, y'all boys just crash at the crib until, you know, so I got a big ass crib. Y'all crash here until y'all get your own spot. So we crashed there for probably like two weeks, three weeks until we got our own own crib. But uh to, to answer your question, now nah, them guys is like, even though I met, I'm blessed enough to to, to meet them between, uh, yeah, 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 you yeah, know, for sure, but, for sure, for sure, uh, through e yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. In, in turn, they they became my friends, like personally, like 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 best friends, like bros. You know, blood can make us no thicker. But yeah, them guys is just you know, with with them being two hundred million dollar niggas. Half a billion dollar niggas, you know what I'm saying? They they regular guys at the end of the day, just like, like Luke, Luke, I remember you telling me a story. Um, I think that um, because like for those who don't know, you do music, but we gonna yeah. get into that. But yeah, I think um, K- KD got a studio. In his crib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I know that KD had a studio in his crib, mm-hmm. and you needed to get in there mm-hmm. one time. And he said, Yo, you know what, Luke? You know what? Goddamn, just just just. You yeah. do you you do this shit without me, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so you out in this bitch with goddamn in Kevin Durant crib. Yeah, me. So me and Hemi had we had recorded this song. Well, we had a song. Shout, we shout him, shout, yeah, him, shout him, out, shout out my boy Hollywood Hemi. Yeah, but uh, we had recorded a song. Well, we needed to record a song. So I text KD like, "Yo, bro, I'm trying to get in the studio." He hit me back. He basically was like, "Nah, I ain't there." Mm. But then I'm like, "All right, just hit me." You know what I'm saying? Whenever. So he hit me back like five, ten minutes later. He like, but I'm gonna have my my you know whoever open the door for you. Just lock up when you leave. So in my head, I'm thinking like, now mind you, a 22 year old nigga from Germany, from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I'm, like, I'm in KD crib by myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, this is this is a, a surreal moment right now, for real. But going there, he got man, so many it's elect Dre beats. Custom made laying around, all types of shit. Gucci laying around. I'm like, damn, you know, you know, we'll never take from him. I'm yeah, like, damn, yeah. he, he trusts us in here with all this shit in here. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> don't know me from from a can of paint. <laughs> but nah, them them is my niggas, man. They they real good guys, man. For real, yo, that's crazy. Hey, look, yo, like, how did how did you and Hemi meet? Uh, me and Hemi, and man, me and me, me and Hemi actually played basketball against each other in high school. Because like, so like, did y'all play in AU or did y'all play in high school? Nah, high school. He was. I heard. I heard first. like mm-hmm. from 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 a great story. I heard Hemi went to Pine Forest. Yeah. And you was going to West Oak. Yeah. So that's when y'all met up. Yeah. Well, that's when I first, you know, what I'm saying, knew of him. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't a bad player either. Like, he could actually play. Yeah. But I really met him. We befriended each other. Uh, uh, we was at a gambling house. That was my first time. I mean, we was like 18 years old. It was probably like 30, 40 people in there. I'm like, man, it's, it's the same nigga that, that dunked on us. Because he, he dunked on us when we uh, my senior year. I'm like, man, it's the same nigga that dunked on us my senior year. Definitely. So I'm hollering at him. I'm like, God damn, what, what's good, fam? I'm feeling your vibe and everything. You, you could hoop and, and shit. And then he like, uh, I'm like, where you from? He was like, yo, Harlem. I'm like, oh, this nigga from Harlem too? Oh, this nigga got swag. I come to find out this nigga, man, he bullshit the whole time. He from Harlem and shit. But nah, that's my nigga, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we met we met at a game playing house. And, uh, it's funny because back in the day in high school, like the, them, the, them side of town boys, like Ranger Street, Murkison Road, Definitely. like you wouldn't catch me dead over there back in high school. Like I got no business being over there. But look, my thing is, um, shout out S dot S dot yeah, told yeah, me sure. S dot told me straight up. He said, um, a lot of niggas don't know because S dot said he from the Merc. Yeah, and S dot said yo, a lot of niggas don't know Luke get embraced the same way I get embraced from my side city. He not from here, mm-hmm. so how the fuck were you able to get embraced? A little basketball nigga from Germany mm-hmm. that comes to Fairville where nigga niggas is gangster, in mm-hmm. bro. How the fuck did you get embraced, nigga? Like, uh, I I feel like just being myself. Cause like I said, even though some niggas got friends that's gangsters or friends that's thugs in the street, robbers, killers, jack boys, whatever, right. they kind of use that to their advantage. Like, yo, my nigga D Rock, he be killing niggas. Like, I was never that type of nigga. Like, you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you yeah, do yeah. what you do. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like, 
it was it was regular shit for me. You know what I'm saying? And Definitely. Just me being myself and not trying to, cause you got some niggas that are like I've seen it with my own two eyes. You got some niggas will be in a in a in a in the neighborhood or somewhere where it might be Bloods and Crips. Definitely. And then they start talking that Blood and Crips shit or, or false claiming. And then when you get G-Check, you don't know your history or your what you're supposed to know. You know what I'm saying? You looking at like a fool or, or a cornball. I never was that type of nigga. Like, I'm not... Just because yeah. I'm around Bloods, I'm not going to be throwing up the Bloods or, the, or throwing up Crips. You know what I'm saying? Like, Definitely. Yeah, so I think I just... The, the, the embrace it comes from just... Yeah. yeah, just being myself. Damn, that's... That's fucking beautiful, bro. And my thing is, like, I just know you from just being, like, somebody that always just knew their self. You know what I'm saying? So, like, where where did that confidence come from? Like, just, when you just know, because, like, in a a city of Fayetteville, North Carolina, Mm -hmm. where we from, 2-6, and Mm -hmm. whatever niggas want to call that shit, Mm -hmm. yo, it's a lot of wannabes, Mm -hmm. bro. And it's, it's, I don't think that it's because they don't know who they are, I mm-hmm. think it's because they get bullied into being something they're not. So, mm-hmm. how the fuck did you, that you didn't get bullied into being what the fuck you, you wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, just, I think that comes from basically having like a, a good foundation at home. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I was fortunate enough to have my, my pops and my mom in the same household and they just basically told me like, you can be whatever it is you want to be. You know what I'm saying? You could be a leader. You could be a follower. If you're going to be a follower, make sure it's in, you following in good footsteps. Definitely. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to do nothing that yeah. everybody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Just because back in the day, niggas is smoking cigarettes or smoking weed or, or getting drunk. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to do that. If you want to do that, you do that. But you don't got to do that just because they doing that. You feel me? Definitely. So, all right. So, look. That night, bro. And anybody from the Ville, please forgive me. I'm not sorry. Um, that night, Air, Earl got kidnapped. Mm-hmm. You was there. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> take take us back to that night. All right. So uh, for the for those of y'all that don't know, my my nigga Earl Wolf. You know what I'm saying? He used to play for the uh, Philadelphia uh, Eagles. Earl Wolf. Um, he went to Hope County. And yeah. He, he was NC um, State. He was a safety. Uh, was, was, I mean, he was a safety. Yeah. Went to NC State. Uh, he played for the Philadelphia Eagles. Then. Washington Redskins, yeah. uh, then the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Definitely. But anyway, um, so me, Earl, and one of my other homeboys, it was around my birthday weekend. This was probably like four or five years ago. It was on my birthday weekend. Was it? Was it Mike B? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shout out Mike B. Yeah, shout out my nigga uh, MB, saucy baby. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was around my birthday. We had came. My birthday was on the twenty second. I think it was like a Saturday. We came back like that Monday. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. niggas is exhausted or whatever. We was just yeah. like, yo, like we. I think me, Mike, and Earl. We we all had like seven, eight hundred dollars a piece on us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we like, yo, we just gonna chill, watch the game or whatever. We gonna uh, we gonna gamble a little bit, play tunk. Definitely. So we playing tunk. You know what I'm saying? It's like twelve o'clock a.m. Mm. So we I go outside to go FaceTime my daughter to tell her good night, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. So when I walk outside, it's like 12, 12 30, I see I see two niggas walking. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I ain't gonna say they look suspicious because like I grew up in that neighborhood, so niggas walk to the it's a corner store right there, niggas walk there every day. For for those who don't know, if you're from Fayetteville, North Carolina, um the neighborhood he's talking about is West Point, but proceed. Yeah, so uh like I said, niggas walk to the store every day. I don't every wanna day. label nobody as suspicious, you know what I mean? Absolutely. But Absolutely. I had a gut feeling. So anyway, um, I went to my car, I got my 40 cal, I got my pistol. Mm. So I went back in the house and them niggas is basically like, man, why you got the pistol? I'm like, man, it looked like it was two niggas out there. I'm not saying they suspicious, but something ain't feel right. You know what I'm saying? So by this time, uh, two, three hours go by, we frying chicken, we talking out, there's music playing, there's money flowing through. You know what I'm saying? We just having a good time. I'm not business, we ain't hurting nobody. You feel me? Wow, wow, bro. Probably about 3, 3.30. We we end up you know wrapping shit up. Mm-hmm. Earl ended up getting stunned. He for all everything he got, he don't even got nothing. But it was like Definitely. seven eight hundred. You know Definitely. what I'm saying? They, they can have it. Yeah, okay. I probably got like a thousand on me, and we probably got like fifteen hundred on him or whatever. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. So me and Earl, we go outside. I'm I'm smoking the rest of my little clip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and had a had a had a garage is set up mm-hmm. on the front porch. The garage is right here. So where Earl is parked at, I can't see unless I walk out into yep. the yard. 
Yeah. So I'm right here smoking. So you know, I say Earl. I tell I dad Earl up like, all right, I'm gonna holler at you. Mm. So Earl goes to his vehicle. He pulls off. I throw the deuces up. I don't know if he saw me or not because he ain't beat but he ain't do nothing. At this time, Earl had a G wagon. Nah, Earl had a range. Okay. He had the range. Okay. But he, he you know, he he pulls it. He he drives off. I throw the deuces up. But Definitely. he he could have saw me. Could have not. Definitely. So anyway, I go upstairs. I tell Mike, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna just stay here because it's it's like I'm I'm sleepy. It take me thirty minutes to get to the other side of the town to my crib. You feel me? Definitely. So I go upstairs in the in the bonus room, mm-hmm. bro. I, I put the gun down. I'm telling you, I put the gun down. Wow. I take my shirt off, oh. with my hoodie off. Yeah. As soon as I'm about to lay down, yeah. I hear a vehicle pull up. It ain't. It wasn't like skirt, but it was aggressive. Like you could hear it, like. Vroom. Pull up, stop. You knew something was was wrong. Well, I'm just you know anybody whether or not you know something wrong or not, it could yeah, be yeah, the next door neighbor yeah. or whatever. You, you still gonna, gonna jump up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, sure. all the car doors slammed aggressive though, like boom, 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 boom. Like, what the fuck? So bro, I look out the window, my nigga. It's like four or five niggas masked up with like big military guns. You know what I'm saying? Like I got a little 40 cal, this, the size so, of this. So during that time, you seen them niggas with the guns? Come yeah, I, I looked out the window, looked down, these niggas got big ass guns like this. You know what I'm saying? Masked up. So what the fuck is going on through your mind during that so time? So at that bro? time, I'm just like, this the end, bro. Like, I'm gonna give myself a fighting chance, but I was like, bro, this the end. Like, them niggas come in here, they, they coming to merch something, they coming to get something, you know what I'm saying? But wow. anyway, um. I hurry up, put my shoes on, I grab the 40, so I go downstairs, I panic, and I'm telling my nigga, like, yo, bro, like, it's some niggas trying to get in here, you feel me? My whole, my whole train of thought at that point in time, you heard uh, Lil Durk on that, that Red Man track, when yeah. he said, uh, you ever had that, that feeling in your stomach, you gonna die? Definitely. Like, Definitely. bro, like, my stomach was feeling like it never felt before, like, so wow. queasy, fam, but anyway. Wow, wow, wow. My whole train of thought at the time was like, bro, if them niggas get in here, for one, we only got $2,500 in here between the two of us, you feel me? Mm. Two, it's weed, it's marijuana smoke in the air. It ain't, it's a smoke sack there. It ain't no pounds or no crazy, you know, amount of marijuana that, that, there. That nobody gonna bubble yeah. off of type shit. But if four niggas come in the crib, four, five niggas come in the crib, and they get 2500 and they smell marijuana, what you think they gonna say next? Sure. They gonna say, man, where the rest of the money at? Where the rest of the drugs at? Okay. We don't got the rest of no money. It's no, it's no rest of no drugs. Okay. But that's what they gonna say. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's okay. what I would say. Like nigga, I smell this. Nigga, where the pounds at? What it's twenty five hundred? Nigga, I know definitely. it's more money around here. You know definitely, what I mean? definitely. But anyway, that's what I'm thinking. Like these niggas, whatever. So, bro, I bust down the back door, and I'm like, bro, like I already told, I already gave them the warning. Like niggas trying to get in here. Like we gotta go. But I bust down the back door. And you know on Cliffdale, like they had the big wooden gate, so that shit like yeah, that shit ain't small, it's like six one six two, you feel me? I know I So I got the forty in my hand, I'm running, I hear somebody say like, Hey, I ain't even look back, I just kept running. I, I leaped the fence and then when I when I when I jumped down, I turned around, I pointed my pistol, but I ain't seen nobody, so I said, Fuck it. I just took off. Mind you, it's like it's mm. it's like February, mm. the end of like February twenty fourth. Mm. It's it's cold, it's rainy, I got a white polo on, you know what I'm saying? So I'm running, and the whole time I'm running, I'm thinking like, all right, I'm gonna dive in these woods right here. Definitely. But it's gates everywhere, and I'm just thinking like, man, just my luck, a big ass dog gonna be barking, 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 yeah. give me up, you feel me? So Definitely. I kept running, kept running. I seen a little open hole, I said, man, fuck it, I'm gonna just take my chances. So mm. shit, at that time I had to get militant, took my shirt off, got under the, got behind the tree, and I just pointed my shit like this. Mm. Them boys done did a U-turn, bro, like a, a full U-turn, double back, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Bro, you know on Cliffdale, you know where the woods is. Definitely, you, definitely. As soon as you jump the gate, you know. Bro, the, I know exactly way. what you're talking about, bro. Bro, they double back. I'm I'm in the woods laying down like this on the side of the tree. On some on some on some fucking these, these niggas get out the truck. It's like two niggas get out the truck with the with the AKs like this. They looking. Basically like this. And I'm like, bro. Like even if I do bust off a shot, they gonna light this fucking woods up. You feel me? Definitely. So the whole time I'm thinking, like, man, I just hope these niggas pull off the law. So they basically got the AKs like this. And then they basically like, man, ain't nobody, he ain't he ain't here no more. Mm-hmm. So at that point, man, uh, I called MB. And at this point, MB already with the with the police. For, so, for, for those who don't know, who, who's MB? Mike B. So I, I called Mike B. Mike B already with the, with the police. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking Mike B kidnapped. He thinking I'm kidnapped. I'm thinking Earl kidnapped. 
Mm. So I called MB and I'm like, well, where you at? He basically like, he said something like he at the airport. Mm. So I'm, I basically, I'm like, the fuck you mean you at the airport? Like, he, I guess he talking to Cole for whatever reason. I don't know why he said that, <laughs> but that shit made me suspicious. So <laughs> like he hung up, like we both hanging up at the same time. So I hung up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so after that, like time went by, time went by. So they got Earl now. When I when I hit MB back, he like, yo, Earl got kidnapped. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm telling him like, bro, like I'm about to come up there, but I'm gonna leave my gun here. You know what I'm saying? So I, I ran up back to the crib, and it was like, like 15 police officers. They got down and started circling me. I guess that's their little procedure or whatever. But I'm telling them like, bro, I'm not armed, not nothing. How, how, how the fuck did your mom and Ben feel about this? Nah, they was just scared because like that shit is just like it was just a normal day. They was just scared, but. Like, um, they end up finding Earl, like, in Hope Mills or something, some shit like that. They dropped him off. They ain't hurt him, though. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Uh, they ain't getting no money either. But, yeah, that shit was just a scary situation. And I, I, I done been in situations, like, like two or three different times like that. You feel me? But that one right there, I really thought, like, bro, this is the end of it, bro. Wow. Like, for real, for real. But. All right, so my thing, it was another situation where, to where, in the field, Eric Manor, I think he got hands put on him at some club. Yeah. Because he, they felt like they, ain't sh- like he ain't showing up love or something like that. Yeah. How did you feel when you got down? You heard about that? Shit? I wasn't there, so I can't really speak on it. And he never really went into detail about it with me, so mm-hmm. I never really asked him. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess he just like, kept tell, talk about it. But from what I heard, I heard stories from five, six different people. I guess definitely, definitely. somebody was. They said Eric ain't show enough love. I don't know if somebody swung on him or missed him. It was some whole county boys? I, I don't know. We, I really don't know to this day. I don't know if somebody My swung on him. My thing is, for those missed. who don't know, it's a city outside of Fayetteville called Hope County. And them niggas really are the have-nots. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it makes sense to where, you know what I mean? They It makes sense to where, like, somebody said, like, yo, this nigga might, might not show enough love. You know what I'm saying? But, like, proceed to where, like, what you, like your, your knowledge of the situation. Yeah, well, like I said, I don't even know if it was somebody from, like, Hope County or right. where it was. Like, some people said it was some nigga from Hope County. Some people said it was That's what I heard. from That's Fayetteville right. or whatever. Right. But, uh, I don't know, like, they, he stole off and, and nipped them or, you know, they was tussling or whatever. But that, that's that's all I got out of the uh, situation. Like I said, I wasn't there. I can't really speak on it. But Hey, from, from, from your own eyes, who was the best person to ever touch a basketball in fucking Fayetteville, North Carolina? Mm-hmm. With your own eyes, because me personally, my best friend is Preston Ross. Like mm-hmm. the same way, the same way your best friend is Eric Mayer, yeah. My best friend is Preston Ross. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And to, I didn't watch that nigga go for like really forty. Yeah. Like ain't no too, ain't too many people that can say they goddamn they went for forty mm-hmm. a game. So and I watched this nigga three games in a row. Like the first game it was like all right, you know, maybe nigga had a good game. Mm-hmm. Second game this is like <laughs> hold on, nigga. In the third game, it's like, all right, that's really the cloth you cut from. So, mm-hmm. other than goddamn Preston Ross, the niggas, the nigga that I was able to put my eyes on, that was the best nigga out of Fairville, is motherfucking Kevin Powell, bro. Kevin Powell, yeah, yeah, I put KP up there. Uh, you know, KP never really got a chance to like really showcase his skills like at the college level and at, at, at the pro level, but KP, yeah, he definitely. I I even there. seen you motherfucking tweet like. Kevin Powell is the motherfucking best shooter. Now I said he was the best player in the gym that day. He was at Federal State, but it was pro. Kevin, I think, I don't know if Kevin was still in high school at the time, but like it was pros in the gym. It's college niggas in the gym, D2, D1, D3. Kevin, the best player in there, for sure. But he ain't really get his just due because he ain't really get to showcase his, his, his skills, you know what I'm saying? But definitely, uh, definitely, definitely. I know it's going to be cliche to say, but Dennis Smith Jr., hands down, fam, because like, the shit I, I, can't, I, I can't say that's cliche. Bro, because he worked for that shit. The bro. shit that I seen this nigga do at 17, 18 years old. Yeah, like I seen highlights on like Baller's Life, Slam, whatever. But when I actually played against him mm-hmm. at Fayetteville State, I'm like, bro, I've never seen a 17 year old do the shit that he's doing. So my thing is, all right. So when you and Eric Manor linked up, do you think that it was a, ever a two guard that could match up to y'all? Because like you had your Tyrons and um. R. Peter's dead, Josh's. Mm-hmm. You had your motherfucking uh, Jason Terry's mm-hmm. and um, no, David Al- Terry. 
Uh, what's his name? David Terry. My bad. Just yeah. Terry. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Yeah. David, David Terry out 71st. Mm-hmm. The White Green. The White Green. Yeah, dog, yeah. bro. I'm talking about left-hander. Left-hander. Yeah, them left-hander. Them he was spraying that knees. shit. Yeah, for some And for my some. thing is, for those who don't know, I was a little nigga really begging my mama, can I go to y'all niggas' games, yeah, dog? Yeah. Because, like, y'all niggas were NBA niggas to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, like, Nuke, you did not know me, bro. I'm a little big nose nigga yeah, yeah. from motherfucking 71st or Harris Place, goddamn. Yeah, yeah. To where I'm like, bro, then, then then I start seeing you, like, you had the uh, the Jim Jones chain mm-hmm. uh, around your shit. You had hella money. <laughs> then you had the 97 zone <laughs> with the white tee. I'm like, on your Facebook, I'm like, Bro, you got to think about it. I'm a little nigga like, yo, who the yeah. fuck? So, during them times, bro, bro, new, I can honestly say I manifested this shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. Because sure. I was like, yo, I don't know who this nigga is, and he don't know me, but I know his little brother. Yeah. And I'm going to get to goddamn <laughs> him, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because off strength of, I just, I, just, I just need to goddamn, that's a void that, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just wanted to meet you, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that's friend. love, that's love. You know what I'm so, saying? Yeah. But off strength of, like, so... Do you think that it was a ever, ever uh, a better two, uh, one-two punch than you and E-Man in the field that you played against? All right, so for, uh, also for those that don't know, like going into my senior year, I was ranked by Hoop School Online, I was ranked the number one point guard in North Carolina, South Carolina. Oh, man. e was ranked the number one two guard in North Carolina, South Carolina. Oh, my God. So when we teamed up, it's like, all right, we, it's nothing else less we accept than, than a state championship, you feel me? But then did when we you, got, did y'all ever get what? Did y'all ever get that? Well, we went to the state championship, but we lost. That's that was it's it because of me. I'll get into that. Yeah. But um, Steve Birch, you know Birch. Man, Birch, Birch was a. Man. If it be honest with you, even though me and Emmanuel would have did damage, if Birch wasn't there, we probably don't go to the state championship. We don't wow. go twenty nine because going into the state championship, we was twenty nine and one. Like Bert, two Bert, Bert, Bert was a, a baseline motherfucking assassin. Yeah, for sure. He gonna take that bitch, go baseline, and he gonna dump on your fucking whole team. So, like, with to answer your question, it was a lot of good backcourts. Like, Justin Johnson, Casey Long, Daryl Spencer, oh Daryl McLeod, God. Earl uh, Covington from Douglasburg. Oh, my gosh. Brent and Ryan from uh, B. Holmes from, um, from E. Smith. Yeah. There's a lot of good guards, but to be honest with you, fam. Oh, the boys at Jack Britt in 71st, too. Like, them boys <laughs> starting four guards. Shout out to Tyrone. Tyrone, 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 Tyrone that, that's White, my big brother. Dontrell, all them boys. I'm sorry. But, and I love them boys. Them boys is my brothers, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, but, definitely. Them boys ain't want no fucking smoke with us, fam. Hey, I swear to God, them niggas ain't want no fucking smoke <laughs> with us. And them niggas, don't get me wrong, like, they, them niggas could give you 20, 30 any night, too. Any night. But, they already you know, bad know Especially my senior year, you come to you come to the west side, bro, you already know. It's you're in trouble. Your ass in trouble, boy. For real, for real. Nigga, how the fuck did you get embraced by the west side? Uh, I got embraced by the west side as soon as I touched down. Because I went to west over my senior, I mean my seventh grade year when I first moved to Fayetteville. Wow. So as soon as I uh, touched down, again, I ran into some crip niggas. You know what I'm saying? And, like The new crips, bro. Yeah, like I ran into some crip niggas and they basically was like, well, let me back up. First of all, my first week at school at Westover. Mm-hmm. I just left South Carolina running into the blood niggas. I'm in seventh grade, bro. I'm at my locker, right? You remember how Bishop rolled up on, on Q and, 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 and Juice? Juice. Juice? Bro, these two crit niggas rolled up on me like that, fam. I'm looking at these niggas wow. like, the fuck is y'all niggas? They basically like, nigga, what's up, nigga? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you, ain't, yeah. you ain't coming to this school thinking you running shit, taking sure. bitches, you ain't doing none of that For shit. Sure. Basically, they on my ass, pause. For sure. But long story short, like, I had to, we ain't fighting nothing, but I still had to, like, like I said, I ain't want no smoke, but I had to, like, defend myself. Yeah. You know, I had to stand up for myself. But anyway, uh, the Crip boys, well, the, the uh, Fox Fire boys, my nigga Kevin and June, you know what I'm saying? My nigga yeah. Joel, Jahir, all them boys, rest in peace, my nigga Jahir. Shout out all y'all boys. Yeah, but now nah, them boys just took me in. And my nigga Justin, Justin, uh, and, and, and Jason from Fox Fire, too, them boys just took me in. Basically, they like, oh yeah, Nuke can hoop, you know what I'm saying? He just starting yeah. PG, like, we're gonna take care of him. So it was just like, everywhere I went, it was like, Nuke, what's good? You got any problems? Let us know. Like, we're gonna solve them. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm just. I'm chilling, trying to get some hoes, feel me? I ain't, I ain't really trying to fight. I ain't trying to brawl. I ain't trying to do none of that shit, but, uh, yeah, man, it's just... What, um, what, what, what does music mean to you? Like, 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 what is music? Like, and then how, how did you get into music? Uh, 
music is just it's just art. It's a, just a form of art and a, a form of expression. And uh, I, I basically got into music. Um, like I said, growing up in Germany, I basically grew up on like uh, top forty music because we mm-hmm. like we, it, it's not like New Jersey or New York. You can go to your record store and get a mixtape. You know what I'm saying? In Germany, is is everything is is at a minimum. You know what I'm definitely, saying? We definitely, can't. Definitely. We get top ten music, not top one hundred. So I don't know all the rappers. So I grew up on like NWA. I grew up on a lot of house music, a lot of pop music. You know what I'm saying? Um, is that is that like? Would you say that the music that you grew up on is uh, an influence on? The yeah, music for sure, make? for sure. Uh, like I said, I make rap music, trap music, but I, I'm more so I like pop music. I like house music. I like. Uh, I like EDM music. That's more so my lane. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. But I still do rap just to let niggas know, like, okay, I can't yeah, speak too much. I, I, I always was a person, like, everybody in my city rap. You ain't gonna find too many niggas that's trying to, like, that do, like, actual pop music or EDM music. Definitely. You know, a few niggas, but mostly yeah. everybody is, like, trap rap and conscious rap, gangster rap. And I just try to, like, right. se- separate myself from from that. But my thing is, like, like, what is that consciousness that lets you know that everybody doing this, so let me do this? Because right. goddamn, the this that you could be doing, which is different, could be classified as the best definition of fucking yeah. whack. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for you, sure. you took the motherfucking, but you make amazing that music though. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Sure. So like, how the fuck you know how to do that shit? Uh, it's, it's basically self taught And like I said, I always like a, was an underdog and go against the grain type nigga. So if everybody is doing this, I'm trying to do this to stand out, even if it's just me by myself mm-hmm. alone. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If it's a hundred niggas over here, I don't mind being just this this one little that one nigga or two niggas. This one nigga or two niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just do what I do to the best of my ability, and um, yeah, that that's how I approach that. And um, what, what was your question again? Uh, my thing is, uh, I I really don't fucking know, but my thing <laughs> is, we gonna, we gonna go to another discussion. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, what the fuck? How oh no, you said how I started making music. So yeah, okay, yeah. when I was in Germany, right before we moved to the states, my mom and dad bought me. <laughs> you stupid! My mom and dad <laughs> bought me this boombox, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on that boombox, it had the CD up top, mm-hmm. then it had the cassette, cassette player at the bottom. I know exactly what you're talking about. So in the two uh, inputs, it had the headphone input, For sure. mic input. For sure. I could take my regular headphones, put it in the mic input. I can get me, cause back then, like I grew up on P Miller, you know what I'm saying, Master P. So back then, you can get artists like a CD, mm. and it'll have like the the instrumental, mm. the explicit, the edited, and then like one more single. Mm. So what I would do, I would have my mom get me blank cassette tapes mm-hmm. from the PX. For sure. I put them in there. I put my headphone jack into the mic part, and I have to wrap it, and I have to wrap it like this. You know what I'm saying? So I put the CD in the instrumental for sure. And if you press play and record, it'll record that instrumental. So the the quality was shitty, but that's how I learned how to how to rap and and do skits. So I would just do skits, and I I had a whole mixtape. I was probably like nine, like eight, nine years old. I had a whole mixtape just. Either re-rapping other sh- people's shit on the same instrumental or just making up my own shit. You know what I'm saying? But so that's how I really is, got into music. My though. thing is, yo, bro, like, me me, me and my little brother, um, shout out my little brother, he back there, he in the behind the scenes. But so, um, we we had this thing that we do. Um, we, give, we give each other 30 days. Like, yeah. 30 days, you better do what the fuck you, you can do in 30 days. Mm-hmm. What do you see new, the artist, in 30 days? In thirty days from now, yes, Lord, man, going to fuck up, bro. Mm. Like, like even even right now, like I'm building everything from ground up. So mm-hmm. it's like right now, my Instagram, it ain't no artist Instagram. It's that that shit. I see, I see, I see, delete everything. Yeah, I had to delete everything. So it's basically like a bullshit Instagram. But I'm gonna show, like I I want to be able to show like from ground up. You know what I'm saying? Like I started. That, yeah, and I don't know if you know. That's the same thing I do with my podcast. Yeah, yeah. Because like I didn't delete everything mm-hmm. to where nigga, you see my podcast now. It's the best definition of fucking lit, you know? mm-hmm. My shit lit. Yeah, for sure. Like even for to this day, I look at my shit like, yo, bro, for sure. I can't believe I'm doing this you shit. You did that my shit nigga. in no time too. And even you, you call me like, yo, nigga, sure. your your shit is progressing fast. Mm-hmm. You know me? So p- proceed, goddamn, uh, goddamn, yo, yo, like you back to your Instagram. Yeah, yo. so I'm gonna get my Instagram back popping. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Of course, Facebook. Um, Definitely. I just signed like I'm I, I'm independent, but I just signed like a little management. 
Uh, wow. Not little, but management slash marketing deal. You know what wow. I'm saying? Wow. So yeah, we just gonna we gonna fuck that, up. Bro. Yeah, I got my album gonna be dropping uh, June 21st. That's the first day of summer. So hey, for those for those who don't know, June 21st, man, look for that goddamn Prince new goddamn yeah, album, sure. bro. That shit's coming out, and I swear to God, I heard a little bit of that shit. That's he's talking trash, bro. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For real, but bro. June 21st, so that, that's gonna give me about. Five or six months to promote it, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, I'm just, shoot, I'm about to start shooting hella videos, man. Uh, just doing hella traveling. Do you, you know do, you, do you, do you plan on getting some features? Like, uh, nah, everything. So me and my producer, we do everything from scratch. Like we do our own mix and mastering. We make every beat from scratch. Like I, I never go into the studio prepared. It's like when I come in there, it's like, all right, D Rock, what we got today? How you yeah, feeling? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Let's go through some instruments. Whatever. But my thing is, yo, Hemi is your one of your best friends, mm -hmm. so. Do you plan on like, Yeah, so like the thing with Hemi, with Hemi Yeah, for sure So the thing with Hemi Is just one of them things Like I don't have to say like Yo, Hemi, we gotta get in the studio We gotta do this Like, mm -hmm. man, we done been in the studio A hundred times And <laughs> it did nothing yet It didn't happen when it happened Like, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying I can get a I can get a feature from Hemi right now All I gotta do is go to Granny Crib And be like, yo, I'm taking you with me For two hours Let's That's get it, it done But I just wanted to happen organic You know what I'm saying That's And it, it didn't happen when it happened But to answer your question I got just one feature he on like three or four songs on, mm. on my album because I got two, I got two albums coming out. One oh my! Album, one rap. You had him. You had him. No, no, no. My my producer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about this? Nah, but we definitely gonna uh, we gonna get it in for sure. Okay, for sure, for sure. But he got he he working on a new project right now. So probably uh when he finished working on his project and when I finish finalizing the albums and shit, we'll probably do something. Definitely, bro. Definitely, man. My thing is, yo, I see you. I see you seen that. Um, you had um posted that where you went. Um, how long without uh without sex? Uh, twenty months. Well, it'll be twenty months in February. I went without without uh having sex. All right. So with that being said, mm -hmm. that's the definition of the best. Discipline that there ever can yeah, be, for sure. because like even now, like even with like I'll talk to a girl and she'll be like, if I don't want to fuck her, she'll be like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Then you want to fuck me? Mm -hmm. other, I'm not, I'm not them other niggas. Mm -hmm. That's so, what I be telling so, them, telling, so, telling too. And it's so cliche to say, but mm -hmm. I'm really not. Like, I'll be trying to tell them the same. Like I'm, I'm not the mother niggas. Baby. I'm not I'm because really not. like yo, I will let you be <laughs> bad as fuck. And I don't want to sex with you, bro. Mm -hmm. Like because it's like I just know what comes with that shit. Mm -hmm. It's a sexual. Uh, it's a motherfucking. What comes with new um, energy? Energy exchange. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's an energy exchange. Sure. So my thing is, it's that shit real. Yeah, honestly, you know what I'm saying? You, I got you. Be falling in love with a bitch, knowing damn well that she ain't the one for you. But pussy be so good, you gonna fall in love. You, you but, go, go ahead. Nah, that's. I'm just saying. Like, so I, I just try to refrain from that. But like my whole. Uh, not having sex journey is this thing called sexual transmutation. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And basically sexual transmutation is like, like if a nigga get horny or want to watch porn or want to go fuck a girl, yeah. like go do something creative. Go interview another nigga for your podcast wow. and go work on your dribbles or wow. go to the booth. So anytime wow. you want to have sex, wow. like go go to the booth or go wow. read a book. You wow. know, try Definitely. to like just expand your mind, expand your creative, your creative thinking. And bro, I did that shit for 20 months And that was really the best thing that ever happened to me Just for the simple fact that mm. Alright, I got three albums that I did That I mm. completed I got a movie script done A TV show done We working on another movie script Working mm. on another TV show mm. Getting done And, you know, of course Life, things happen at a mm. fast pace And life hits you in the yeah. either good way, bad way and, Definitely and, and, Few years ago life hit me in a bad way so i just had to really think like damn what can i do to really progress my life and speed this shit up like expedite my goals and aspirations and for me it was stop having sex with all these girls mm -hmm. stop you know uh going to the clubs just spending money uh fucking Definitely. with fucking with strippers not really strippers i love strippers but like women in general you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying it's Definitely. just like Definitely. it got to a point I'm fucking this girl, fucking this girl. I'm fucking a different girl every day of the week. I'm hitting her from the back, and I'm just looking down like, what, what am I doing, bro? Like, bro, this shit feel good for 10 minutes. I, I feel like doing? shit afterwards. You know what, what I'm saying? What am I fucking doing? Just, just wasted energy, wasted frequencies. It's different if we 
was reading a book together and, and, and enhancing each other's minds, and then we had sex. You know what I'm saying? But just to like come through, oh, sip on Hennessy, and then because you like, know what I mean? like I can imagine that somebody told you that was the way to go. Like fuck all these bitches, fuck all the bitches you can. Mm-hmm. But when you when you fucking all these bitches, you start to realize that, bro, what the yo? I don't even. Look. I don't want to fuck you like I'm that. Saying, like saying. you know what I'm saying? Like yo, you giving me. And excuse to to the people that's out there listening. Excuse my language. Your head not even really like ain't that. Even like that. <laughs> what the fuck am I Honestly. doing, dog? But also, it's like, it's like, I'm I'm wasting energy with with the girl. I mean, she wasting energy. Not only am I wasting energy with her, she wasting energy with, with me. me. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no intentions like, on exactly. So it's like, all right, niggas always want to say. Oh, what does the female have to offer? Which that's true. Like, what you got to offer? Just sex and Netflix and chill. Definitely. But, like, nigga, what you got to offer, nigga? <laughs> and at the at the Definitely. point in time, like, I had to stop that shit because, bro, like, I ain't have shit to offer a bitch. Nothing. Wow. Like, wow. Nothing. Wow. Except sex. I I ain't, I couldn't offer her. I couldn't be there for her emotionally, physically, mentally. Nothing. Like, you know what wow. I'm saying? So it's just like. Most niggas uh, 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 keep taking advantage of that situation. Definitely. I'm trying to tell the girl, like, baby, I don't want to settle, and I don't even want you to settle for me. Like, you mm. baby, you damn sure deserve better than me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. I ain't got shit right now. Mm. Nothing. But do you think that for that very reason that, all right, so that moment that you don't got shit, yeah. do you think that that's, you're like, most niggas be like, that's when the girl's supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. Did you did you look at it like that? Like that that's when the bitch supposed to be there for you when you don't got shit. Uh, in the perfect in the perfect world, yeah, hell yeah. But like me personally, I look at it as like nigga, I'm the provider. Yeah. So if I don't have shit for you, don't look my way. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause like that's realistically like mm-hmm. because like we go out. I know you're gonna look at me a type of way when I can't get the bill mm-hmm. or when, when I know you wanna like nowadays you, you wanna go smoke some hookah or some shit like that. I can't do that shit for you. Because I'm broke as fuck. Mm-hmm. Worry about you and bettering yourself. I ain't, I ain't going to bring I do nothing but bring you down. It's real shit. That's, yo. <laughs> that's the def, that's the, that's the real shit that uh, anybody could ever, because, nigga, you're not running game. Nigga. Nah. No, no, you know what I'm saying? And, like, my thing is, you're just telling them straight up, like, yo, bro, I can't really do anything with you. Mm-hmm. So, let's just part our ways. Yeah, let's go. That's what's up, man. Hey, look, Prince Nuke. It's been a pleasure, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Trash out with rock, man. Already, already. Man, we got to do this again, for sure. We're going to do it. We're going to do another rap around. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we out, man. Already.